Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing things a little bit differently here on the channel. I'm going to be filming and talking live as I make my recipe. I'm trying to find a way to simplify this so that I'm able to put out more videos for you guys. I'm a homeschooling mom, I'm super busy, and I don't have a lot of t extra time to film. So I thought if I tried to simplify my filming process for you guys, then I could start bringing more recipes to you guys. So today we're gonna be making a roasted corn and poblano chowder. This is gonna be made in the Instant Pot, but of course you can do all of this on the stove top. You can even throw all of this in your crock pot as well. Super easy to use any one of those devices to do this. So. I'm going to show you today though how I do it in an instant pot because it's super easy to do it that way and I love easy over here, quick, easy, delicious, whole food, plant-based, and oil-free. So we're going to start out with roasting our poblanos. Now if you don't have access to roasted corn, this is just corn, literally the only ingredient, there's no oil or nothing like that, that I got from Trader Joe's. And if you don't have access to this, you can go ahead and roast your ears of corn with your poblanos. So I would say about four ears of corn because we want about four cups of roasted corn that's gonna go into this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and roast my poblanos under my broiler for about five minutes, flip them another five. You just wanna watch them. What you're looking to do is char them on all sides. And you would do the same with your corn if you don't have roasted corn already. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss these in my pan and then we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven and as soon as they come out, I'll show you what they look like, but we'll go ahead and get started on some other parts of this soup while these are roasting in the oven. Now, so you don't get distracted, I always set a timer because you don't wanna burn these completely. You wanna char them, but you don't wanna end up like searing them to where they're not usable. So I always set a timer while I'm working on other things so that I don't get distracted and forget about that. So now we're gonna go ahead and start adding some stuff into our Instant Pot. So I'm gonna get that out and then show you guys what I do. I just wanted to show you what they look like when they start to blister. And so I'm gonna flip these over and I'm gonna do them for another five minutes. So I'm gonna turn my Instant Pot on saute mode because we're going to saute some onions and some celery as soon as it warms up. The time on mine is just set to 20 minutes, but it doesn't matter. We just want it to get hot so that we can saute. We're gonna go ahead and use three cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and crush this open. And then I have a garlic press, but you can just mince yours. If you want one of these nifty little gadgets, you just put in garlic press on Amazon. That's where I got mine. I love it. I hate having to chop up garlic. I'm actually just gonna do two since those are so big. So, but you want about three cloves of garlic total. Let me just get one of my knives here. I'm gonna go ahead and peel these. So then we can go ahead and mince those up. If you hear any noise in the background, I have kids, my husband just got home, so this is real life over here. So in order for me to continue to film, I just have to make it work because I just do not have the time anymore these days for the entire theatrics that I had going on before. So I'm going to go ahead and mince these up. I love these because you just pop them right in. These ones are kind of big, so I'm just going to pop them in half, toss them in there, and then you just squeeze it and it comes right out, super easy. And put the other one in there, okay. <clears throat> so, and this was only like $5 on Amazon, so honestly for me it was worth it because I didn't have to chop all this stuff up. And it gets it nice and nice and minced for you, so. All right, so piece there. And we're gonna toss that in towards the end of our um, onion sauteing. So that's the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and check on the poblano peppers. Okay, so you can see here, these look perfect. 
These are perfect. I love them. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to let these set to the side while we finish doing everything else so that they can cool and they will get nice and soft and then we'll take the stems and seeds out of them. I have to say, I'm going to go ahead and put these in a bowl and cover these up because we want these to get nice and sweated down so that we can peel this charred skin off the outside and then we'll cut out the stem and the seeds. Okay, so now that it says hot on here, we're gonna go ahead and add our onions and celery right into the pot. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a little mix here. Mix that all up and let that saute down. And you don't need any oil. You can do this. You can add a little water if need be, but once it starts to sweat, it releases its own moisture, so it's fine. So I wouldn't worry about that. And if you were going to do this in on the stove top or in your crock pot, on the stove top, obviously you would just heat up your pan and you would saute these in your pan. If you're gonna do this in the crock pot and you wanted to release some of those flavors from them, you could saute them first and then add them into your crock pot. It's up to you. You could even skip this step when making this recipe in the Instant Pot. It's totally up to you. I just find that it adds a little bit of depth of flavor. And of course, as always, I'll have the full written recipe for this down in the description box below. Okay, so you can see here, it's getting nice and translucent. You can add a little water right now if you wanted to, so that It'll take all those little bits up off the bottom of your pot. Nice and steamy. And then you just continue to let them sweat down. You're just looking for them to get translucent and they're almost there. Okay, so I have three small Yukon Gold potatoes here. You want about two cups total. So I'm just gonna cut these up into small little pieces. And then we'll see how much we have. I don't think I need another potato, but we'll see. Just gonna give them a little rough chop. You're gonna be blending half of this soup. This is really good, it freezes well. I believe that every soup can be frozen, <laughs> that's just me. I freeze most things in my life anyways. Like I am the type of person that just throws everything in the freezer especially fruits and veggie, if they're gonna go bad, I just toss them in the freezer. So the only thing I blanch first is usually broccoli. So when it comes to like spinach and stuff, I will just toss it in. And before I made this video, I prepped a ton of celery and onions and carrots that I just chopped up and I added to bags inside of my freezer so that I have them when I wanna easily make some soup and I don't wanna have to do any prep work. So that's a little life hack for you, especially during the winter time because you make a lot of soups and so it's nice that you can skip some of the prep work. So um, this looks about two cups to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this right into our pot. Okay, so you can see here that my onions look really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss in this garlic really quick. Just give that a little mix. Maybe toss in just a little more water. Let me see here. To get those bits off the bottom. So just do that. Okay, so now just let the garlic cook here for a minute. And I'm going to add in my potatoes. And then we're gonna add in some seasoning. So I'm gonna do about a table or a teaspoon of cumin. And I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of oregano. So let me go ahead and get my measuring spoon here. I know it's a lot different just cooking with me live. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna add my cumin in now because I like it to get heated up by the pan a little bit. I feel like it releases all those flavors. And then I have some oregano that I'm just gonna put right in here, right into the pot. Okay, 
And again, the full written recipe will be in the description box below. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my saute function off so that we can take care of those poblanos and then we will add the rest of our ingredients right into our pot. Okay, so my poblanos are ready. So I'm gonna start off by peeling all of this off of them. You wanna get all of that off of there so that you don't have any of that tough skin on there. I'm not that picky. Some people like freak out about it. Sometimes I'll just be lazy and I'll leave it on when I'm making a soup. Cause when it's in a soup, you can't tell, but I mean, depending on the type of recipe you're making, you don't want to leave it on. But honestly, if you're lazy, <laughs> Sometimes I will literally just leave this on if I'm tossing it in a soup. It really doesn't change the flavor and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make a difference. And once you cook it in the instant pot, it's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish peeling all of this off. And then I'll show you what they look like when I'm done. Okay, so these are what they look like when I'm all done with them. And then I usually just pull this rip this open and then I just pull this off because it's so soft around the top of it save that piece and then I just discard those and then I just scrape all the seeds off of these and then um, I just dice them up so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse a little bit of those seeds off here And then I will do the same thing with this one. So super, super easy. And if you love poblano pepper recipes like I do, which if you're new here, you can go on my channel and you'll see I have plenty of poblano pepper recipes. Um, another thing I like to do is roast them like this as well. And get the top off of there. And um, I like to dice them up and freeze them so then I don't have to do all this prep work. So then when I do wanna make one of these, it's super easy. So I'm just gonna take the seeds off of here too. You can just scrape them out, but I usually use my hands and then I pull them off with the water off of my hand. Hopefully you can hear me over there. And so then I'm just gonna chop these up. I usually just give them like a rough chop like this. I'm gonna dice it up. A few seeds left here. Again, real life over here. <laughs> it's so different for me to film like this, but it's honestly better for me to do this because I really wanna get recipes out for you guys. I have so many ideas and recipes I have written down that I have created for my channel and for the whole food plant-based community that I just haven't been able to produce for you guys because I'm a homeschooling mom. I'm also homeschooling two other family members' kids right now. So I really have my hands full and I just don't have the time to set up my little situation like I had before and then you know do the voiceovers when the kids go to bed because that's what I used to do and it's just too exhausting and I don't know why I was wasting my time doing that anyways <laughs> so we're just gonna do this you know make it easy I used to prep all this stuff off camera and then show you guys and I just feel like it's way easier and more real life here. You can see exactly my process of doing a lot more things. So I'm just going to dice these up all the way. Now, something I like to do, which is optional, is I also am going to add in a can of green chilies just because it gives it a little bit extra flavor and I really love it. So we're going to go ahead and get my instant pot over here again because I had to move it out of my way because I have a whole ton of things going on in my kitchen right now because I was prepping a bunch of stuff for the freezer earlier as well so I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you guys the rest of the steps okay so 
I have my onions, my garlic, my celery, my seasoning, and my potatoes in here. So we're gonna go ahead and add in those green chili, or the poblano peppers, sorry. And then we're gonna add in our green chilies. So I just have a can of diced green chilies. And again, if you, if some of the heat is too much for you, you could leave these out. I always say your kitchen is your kitchen. Do things the way you're comfortable with. So now we're gonna add in our corn and our vegetable broth and I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my roasted corn and I'm gonna add that in. And I'm a little bit of a stickler for measuring things because like right now, I'm being very careful with my macros. It's very important because I have a lot of stuff going on with me. So counting my macros is important. I know a lot of people on whole food, plant-based, oil-free diet do not count their macros. So obviously, you can eyeball things if not. So this takes about a whole bag and then I usually open the second bag because this only is about, this bag's only about three and a half cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we'll just get that added in. And then I'm going to add in my vegetable broth. And then we're gonna put the lid on this and we're gonna cook this and we will add our plant milk at the end. And so when we come back, we'll talk about that after this is done because I wanna let you know the different options you have to make this the creamiest chowder possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on and then we're gonna go ahead and set that pressure cook on high for five minutes. And then when it's done, just let it naturally release for 10 minutes and then we will release the pressure and then I'll show you what to do next. Again, this seems like it's taking a long time because I'm kind of like doing it in clips for you guys, but this really is so quick and easy to throw together. Also, if you're gonna do it on the stove top, I'd say you wanna cook this for about 25 minutes. You want your potatoes to get nice and soft. If it's in the crock pot, I'm gonna say about four hours on high, to, um, on low, two hours on high. Okay, so the five minutes went off, so now I'm gonna let this naturally release for 10 minutes. So when this reaches 10 minutes, we'll go ahead and release our pressure from our Instant Pot. Okay, so my Instant Pot has reached 10 minutes on natural release. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a rag over this and we will release the pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and take my lid off. And now what you wanna do is you wanna take half of this out and blend it if you don't have an immersion blender. I have an immersion blender, so I'm gonna stick this in and blend some of this up. But if you don't, you wanna take half of it out, dump it in your blender and blend it up. Of course, be careful, you don't want your blender to explode. Um, preferably a Vitamix, but you know your blender, so just be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about the different milks that you could use for this. Any plant milk will work, but a light coconut milk is going to make it the creamiest. I use an almond milk because that's what I like to use and I am trying to stick to certain macros. But oat milk makes this really creamy as well, especially if you make your own oat milk, which is so easy to do. I've showed you guys how to do it here on the channel. It's just water and oats, you blend it together, you strain it, and boom, you have a nice, thick, creamy, delicious oat milk. So those are some different options. Okay, so that is good. So like I said, you wanna blend up half of that in your blender if you can, if you don't have an immersion blender. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of plant milk to this and then mix it up and this is ready to serve this is so delicious you guys i love this there's no salt added to this of course you can add salt and pepper if you eat those things in your diet but it's super delicious i love it i'll go ahead and make myself a bowl and then i will show you what it looks like okay so i like to serve mine with a little green onion on top and then fresh squeeze of lime. 
obviously you could add cilantro, you could add a tofu sour cream or a cashew sour cream over the top of this, whatever your heart desires. But that is it, that's how I make my poblano roasted corn chowder. As always, if you like this video guys, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and stick around for more whole food, plant-based, and oil-free recipes. Bye!